Welcome back to the Single Malt Review. In recent episodes, we have been all over the place, from Scotland, abroad, back again. This time, we're going to mix things up slightly with a Scottish take on a continental classic. Tim, mm. fill us in. It's a bit of, not quite a fusion, but it is a label that should be familiar, but different. As you've probably seen coming, this is in fact cognac, and yet it says Caden Heads on the bottle. So it's a cognac from France, obviously, that has been bottled by Caden Heads, the big old Scotch whisky bottler. And I think, given how many we've seen on the Single Malt Review, one of the most prolific, you would have to say. So this is cognac, which I know practically nothing about. Um, probably a slightly... Uh, strange place to start with a 30 year old but it was sold to me at a, a very good price so I took them up on that and we'll just have to start with the best and maybe work our way down we will see my only other encounters with cognac have been on aeroplanes and they haven't been stunning you know sort of the Martinez and the XO or whatever they like to call it this is the first cognac I have seen that has sported anything like a year statement or where it came from which is the distillery Charpentier in the Petit Champagne. Of course, cognac has to be made in the Champagne region, so either Petit Champagne or Grand Champagne. The two styles are supposed to be a little bit different, but I really couldn't say what the intrinsic properties of that difference is. We'll have to find a Grand Champagne to really find out for ourselves. So, 30 years old, and what cask it came from, I really really don't know because this is a cask which produced 822 bottles so that is bigger than a butt that is bigger than anything I think it could possibly be a fooder um, but that's more of a German style of cask so I really don't know there may be some cask that is somewhat intrinsic to the Champagne and Cognac region that I'm completely unfamiliar with and that's what it came out of so an enormous cask that produced it's these. It's uh, 52.4% right? Mm. So okay. that's um, that's after it's come down. So mm. we're looking at something with a huge years. literage, yeah. huge literage to begin with. Quite, quite fascinating. Mm. As is the cognac itself. Obviously, totally alien to Scotch in many ways, but similar in others. Cognac, unlike the rest of just French brandy and its sort of cousin Armagnac, which is very, very similar to cognac, but with slightly more relaxed rules that can be produced in a wider area, and it doesn't have to, like this one, be 100% copper pot stilled. So it's got that in common. The pot stills aren't quite as similar as the sort of uh, classic Forsyth's pot still in Scotland, but they're uh, functionally very similar, and it's all copper pot still, just like a malt whiskey. So we've got that in common at least, but that's just about where things diverge. So we're in for a bit of an alien experience here. Mm. And my wife enjoys a good cognac. I'm partial to a spot of bourbon, sorry, brandy, where that came from, brandy of course. Um, but I won't profess to be any kind of expert, verbal flubs obviously proving that. Mm. So, on the nose, it's pretty exciting really. Mm. It's a bit fumy in this hot weather because it is quite strong, but I'm getting, in addition to that sort of grapey brandy flavour, which is it's really quite its own thing and very, very detectable, it's sort of a, you'd have to describe it as a bittersweet thing, is the dominant aroma you get off a grape distillate that's been aged. Not so much grappa or anything like that, but aged grape distillate. Mm. But there's quite a lot of very ripe fruit. There's like a overripe banana, quite dominantly. And I get quite a lot of old-fashioned confectionery. There's a little bit mm. of raspberry candy. There's some Irish moss spicing things up. There's some purple jelly bean. That's assuming your purple jelly beans where you are in the world are the same as the purple jelly beans over in our part of the world, which is by no means a guarantee, so don't quote me on the purple jelly beans. But... As Dave says, there is Irish moss. There's quite a distinct old-fashioned cough medicine. Um, if you think back um, maybe 15 years ago to when cough medicine used to be a bit more fun than it is now, there was um, it was quite delicious sometimes. And this has the hallmarks of that. Just a little bit of Vix Formula 44 or something like that about it. Quite a sort of lovely, juicy, spicy, alluring mix. Mm. Let's see Let's try. what's on the palate at full strength. Ooh. 
Mm. There's a lot of spices in there. I'm tasting, strangely, or at least surprisingly to me, mustard and Sichuan pepper. Mm. There is, I'm not sure about the Sichuan pepper, but there's definitely the sort of aromatic black pepper, like pepper skins, I'm getting quite distinctly. I agree about the mustard. There is quite a, quite a dry tanginess to it for such a sort of rich and fruity nose. The palate is fairly dry, at least at this high strength. The wood, maybe unsurprisingly given the enormity of the cask, is not too prevalent. It's not a very oaky flavour. It's much, much more fruity, spicy and um, confectionery driven. But if you imagine with the literage we're looking at here, the amount of contact with the oak would be much, much, much less than even a large sherry butt would give you. More than twice. Much more than twice. So it's understandable that there isn't a huge oak flavour to that. I'm going to put a bit of water in and see if that makes things a wee bit easier to well, discern. Tim said, I'm going to comment on the curious colour here. In the bottle, this is an extremely vivid ruby red. It's quite striking. But in the glass, it's a much more mellow, like a fairly young scotch. The dark honey gold. Hmm. No, it's quite a good um, amber, you would call it, I suppose. Mm. But yes, significantly deeper in the bottle and very, very oily. It doesn't really come through on camera, but a um, few things I have seen hold the rim of a glass or have quite such robust bubbles as, um, as this one does. Mm. Oh, now that water has made things significantly easier. I'm smelling much more fruit now than mm. I did before. It's really very, very fruity. Um, there's orange, sort of sweet navel orange, and quite a bit of peel in there as well. Mm. There's marmalade, maybe even a little bit of preserved citrus, not fresh citrus. I'm getting a touch of but... feijoa, which is one of my least favourite fruit, mm. but in this case I don't mind mm. the smell, because it's, it's very tempting. Sort of a feijoa skin coming out of there. Now that's distinctly more impressive there. Mm. That has transformed the flavour. Mm. I'm now tasting Strangely, lemonade, lime juice, and of all things, iced tea. Yeah, that is I'm really surprised. That is one of the most phenomenal transformations I have seen when adding whiskey to any spirit ever. I think that could be the most phenomenal transformation. This has gone from a fairly hard, fairly not absolutely closed, but a dry, dry and bittersweet spirit to something that is really. Now quite lush, quite sweet, and abundantly fruity. Fruit's now giving way to that more esoteric confectionery and spice than we saw earlier. It's really quite, really quite juicy now, with extremely ripe um, orange and peel. And as Dave says, just the aroma of Fijo are quite strongly there. There's I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise that it's quite an odd experience, given what we are used to, but it's it's odd and it's good. It's really rather nice. Yeah. But for all we know, this is, this is what happens with a very mature cognac. Mm. Uh, it could be normal to this, this amount of variety, this sheer amount of different things packed into one small glass. But obviously you don't know. This is the start of what I hope will be a really interesting journey of... Yep. Yeah, ideally so. Like I said, I got an extremely good deal on this one. I'll show you a bit of a close-up there if you want to if you spy it on the shelf yourself. It should be still available. I think it's a fairly recent bottling. But, of course, Old Cognac is one of the most phenomenally exclusive things in the world, really. I mean, Old Scotch gets pretty ridiculous, but Old Cognac um, is one of the very, very few things that can trumpet for things that come in bespoke packaging for quite often thousands of dollars um, price tag uh, for really no good reason. Um, I can assure you this one was significantly less, but that's the way with independent bottles. They are so often the way to get the best out of what you're looking to taste because Kate and Ted's especially old illustrious company that they are, they're really, 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 very really quality focused and focused on well, I almost said focused on the whiskey. They're focused on the spirit, in this case. Bringing good spirits to consumers. Um, whereas uh, things that are on label, you know, your, your VX, your XO, your anything like that, 
Um, there's just so much prestige associated. You know, the gift market has gotten in so heavily there that the prices are just so dissociated with the quality of what you're getting. It's just so, so hard to recommend. Uh, it's tragic, really, because that's, um, that's most of the spirits in the world are sold on label. The independent bottling market is very, very, very slim. But, um, no, I could not, could not recommend enough that people go and seek out these independents because they will get just so much more for their money and so much better for um, what they buy bottle to bottle. But anyway, enough of that particular diatribe. Scores for this one. Again, with the bourbon, this is the first example of this one we've tasted, so it will be our first and presently, and probably for a little while yet, our sole cognac score. I might broaden that into brandy because it is the same thing, there's just a few more rules associated. So I'll say this is a brandy score, and I will give it... I'm probably ballparking here, but I'm going to say this is probably a really, really very good cognac, and I'm going to give it a 90. What do you think? Well, I've had a fair few brandies, I've had a small handful of cognacs, but this one, just the amount of complexity there, and knowing how old it is, and that it's that Caden Heads have picked it out for an independent bottling, I'm going to give this one a 95. This mm. is going to be one of my kind of standard bearers as far as a particular type of spirit goes. I'll be comparing a lot of future brandies against this one. Yeah, no, it's when we when we get our hands on another one will be when this is really sort of brought into the uh, brought into light as to how correct we were, at least under our own rules and systems, but I think this is a really, really promising start. Mm. I never thought, I always thought of brandy as something slightly cheap that you got given on aeroplanes and made into cocktails and stuff like that, but having now tried a good one, I think it really does have its own merits, mm. really. It's not whiskey, that's for sure, but it has many of the same qualities, and it has just as much complexity, at least in this, this is, example. It's just so versatile. I would pair this with a rich dinner, mm. or a strong dessert, or a cheese board, or even a mild cigar if I was feeling a bit daring. Conceivably even a robust cigar with mm. something this characterful. But at any rate, this has been yet another non-whiskey single malt review. We promise we will get back onto the uh, whiskey treadmill very shortly. We just thought we'd um, spice things up with a few different types of spirit now and then. At any rate, Slanger, and do let us know if there's something you would like us to taste. I promise the Appleton 12 year old is coming up very shortly. We had a request for that one and I know I can find some of that sooner or later and it is really rather, rather good rum as well for how available it is. So look for that one coming up and in the meantime, stay safe and enjoy a fine dram or two in the meantime. Thank you.